Hey guys, BowHD here, and this little box contains the cheapest, or at least one of the cheapest, off-contract smartphones in the world, that being the recently announced Moto E. Now the Moto E obviously isn't all about specs, it's about being a cheap alternative to many of the more expensive smartphones made by dominating smartphone companies. So with that said, as you can and will see, this is a very basic phone, as Motorola needs to cut its cost as much as possible. So if we go ahead and open up the side of the Moto E box and lift up the top, will be greeted with the Moto E sitting right on top in the black global variant. It also comes in white, and of course if you'd like you can customize the back cover to several different colors if you'd like. But if you put that off to the side for a moment and take a look at what lies underneath, we'll quite simply find the AC wall adapter attached to the micro USB cable used to charge the Moto E, and then we'll find a few information and get started packets in a multitude of languages, and that's all that's in this box. I told you it was pretty basic. So if we take a look back at the Moto E and peel off that plastic, we'll be greeted with a pretty comfortable and not too obtrusive device, as it fits perfectly in my hands, it's not too big or too small. And so if we take a look around the device, we'll see the power on off button and volume controls on the right hand side, with nothing on the left hand side. Up top we'll find the 3.5mm headphone jack and noise cancelling microphone, and then down below we'll find the micro USB charging port. On the front of the E will be an ambient light sensor and speaker for making calls, and then down below we'll find a front facing speaker because that just makes sense. Seriously, front facing speakers are awesome. But besides that, on the back we'll find a 5 megapixel rear facing camera, and then the dimpled Motorola logo, and that's just about it. It's very similar to the Moto X and Moto G in terms of design, that's for sure. Now if you go ahead and power this device on, we'll see it resembles stock Android. It basically is stock Android with a few Motorola features thrown in here and there, but this is good news for a phone with not very powerful specs, as stock Android doesn't really require a whole lot of power to operate. I mean, scrolling through the home screens and apps is nice and smooth, there's not a whole lot of lag or stuttering. I mean, yes there is some, but no, it's not too bad at all. The times you really start to notice some lag is when you're cruising through your phone opening and closing applications quickly, and loading graphic intensive apps. But for $129, it certainly performs well just based off first impressions. I mean, it feels good in the hands, it's nice and fluid for the most part, and the display isn't terrible. Yes, you can notice the pixels when you look really close, but the colors are nice and sharp, which is all you can really hope for with a phone at this price. So for only $129, is the Moto E your next smartphone? Let me know what you guys think by leaving me a comment right down below. Obviously this phone isn't for everyone, and for a lot of people it will probably be their first smartphone, but I'd love to see what you guys think of this phone, especially now that Motorola is starting to make a significant impact on the smartphone industry. And if you guys are new to my channel and would like to see more high-def tech videos like this one, don't forget to hit that little subscribe button right down here so that you can stay up to date with all my latest tech videos. But with that said, that's going to about do it for this video guys. If you want to take a look at the LG G3 and all of the latest leaks surrounding the G3, you can do so right down below, or you can take a look at my review of the Samsung Galaxy S5 if that's something you'd be interested in. But as always guys, I'm BoHD from How To and More. Thanks for watching.